wonder if you can use the pass, like we go and want to go to one on one day and want to come back to another one. Can we do that? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome aboard and welcome to the world famous San Diego Zoo. How are you party animals doing today? Who's ready to go see the zoo? Well, let's get this party started. My name is Nicole, and I have the pleasure of being your tour guide and bus driver on this lovely afternoon. And I am very excited to have you all on board with me today because we are going to be going on an adventure together. We're going to be traveling across five different continents and moving through thousands of years of history through the animal kingdom. So I hope you brought your overnight bag, right? No? Oh, it's okay. We'll be together for just about 35 to 40 minutes on this tour seeing some of the 12,000 animals that we have here, many of which are rare and endangered. So I'll teach you all a thing or two that you can do to help save the species. Step one, do not hit the peacock. I'm trying my best, everyone. <laughs> it's our goal here at the San Diego Zoo to make sure that all life thrives. So I'll teach you all a thing or two that you can do to help save those species. On our right, we have Treetop Sway. That's where you can see monkeys and apes of all sizes and shapes swinging around all day. We also have this fabulous flamboyance of the North American flamingos, the most pink of all six species of flamingo. And straight ahead, we have Sky Far East. That's the gondola ride that's going to take you high in the sky all the way across the zoo, giving you an amazing bird's eye view of all that we have to offer here. That's also where you'll find the Reptile House and the brand new Komodo Kingdom and Hummingbird Habitats. I highly recommend you check those out today. But right now we are going to dip on down into the Lost Forest. Woo! So please feel free to put your hands up and say, Whee! Oh yeah. Now, if you want to follow kids, huh? along on your map, feel free to do so. The Lost Forest is the area in the center, surrounded by all of the green. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of green stuff all around us. Oh, and another peacock. <laughs> These guys, they are everywhere. I'm sure you'll get to see quite a few of them today. That's Kevin number two. And if you guys don't have a map on you either today anyway, you are welcome to always download that San Diego Zoo map app right onto your phone and you can follow along that way. Now before we get to our very first habitat, I'll give everybody a quick little safety reminder. I want you all to have the very best view on our ride today, so if you need to stand up and move around, that's totally fine. Just hold on to a silver railing, uh, feet on the floor, not on the benches, unless I'm not looking. And let's keep our hands, feet, arms, legs, toes, tails, trunks, snout, hooves, horns, scales, tails, fingernails, I don't know, whatever else you have on you, inside the bus at all times. Nobody's allowed to go overboard today, and certainly not next to the Malayan tiger habitat on the right. Around. Now let's see who we have here. Oh my goodness. That's Big Connor. That is one of our male Malayan tigers. So one of our three, actually. People up top need to stand up and move around. Totally fine. I see you up there. Same thing with you guys down here. Now that is, like I said, Connor. He is one of three oh, see male yeah. tigers that live here. He lives here with his two younger brothers. Their names are Chinta and Barani. 
He's on that, that, that ledge. Why don't you want to bring Mama Tiger over here and we'll take her into the San Diego Zoo as a rescue. Do you see his tail? Mm. And that's exactly what we did. So yeah. the tree, yeah. you he see him? Okay. a flagship species for what we call the Species Survival Plan, which is a lot that's a nice an online dating service for the animals. <laughs> we actually get to play matchmaker. We pair up animals that all have the highest levels of genetic diversity to one another. And that guarantees us lots of happy, healthy babies, a full level of inbreeding, and, and uh, you know, a low chance of any diseases or genetic problems later in life. And we were super successful with it. Mama Tiger, she gave us 12 baby cubs in her time with us. Connor and his two brothers, just three of them. And uh, we also have Connor's twin sister, his litter mate, who lives over on Center Street. And we'll say hi to her in just a little bit. Connor. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep on rolling down the hill. So hold on to something over there. Can stay up here? Nice. Waterfall. That habitat doesn't make me sad. Oh. Now, if you look all around us, it certainly does look like we are traveling through a rainforest. This area is actually designed after an Asian rainforest where we have one of our eight hubs of conservation all around the world. The hubs of conservation that is where we have our researchers and our experts hard at work every day doing their job to help save the endangered species out there. This area is also designed after a rainforest to give you all the experience of traveling through one and it feels like home for a lot of the animals that live here, including somebody that we have here up next who also happens to be one of the world's most dangerous. Can anybody tell me who might live in this pool? Lion. Good job, I heard someone say it, the hippopotamus. You are correct. Really? And the hippo, they are super dangerous animals. They're actually one of the strongest land mammals on the planet. They have a super incredible bite. They can actually crunch down on a whole watermelon with the same amount of bite force as it takes you or I to bite into a grape. I wouldn't want to be that oh, watermelon. that's a statue. Now today is Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. That also means that we have big Papa Otis in the pool today. He gets the pool to himself on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then Mama and Baby, who we have, they actually get the pool together on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and weekends. And we keep them separated on certain days of the week like that for a couple of reasons. Mom See, is Annie? super protective of her baby. And Otis... He's a little bit of a jealous boyfriend, and he's not just any jealous boyfriend, he is a 4,000 pound jealous boyfriend. So we'll, you know, keep them separated until mom decides that they have to walk down to the uh, Yeah, because uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Now, the hippos, they spend about 16 hours a day totally submerged in water, so you're typically going to find them in the pool here. I see the top of his, uh, his back just uh, over this way where the largest group of people have gathered. It's typical. That's where you're going to find them. And they uh, spend so much time underwater. Have better view down it's pretty to find out that they actually can't even swim. They also don't float, even though they're typically depicted to be floating down a lazy river. That's not the case. They actually use the momentum of their body weight to push off the floor of the pool or the river and glide through the water like a big old 4,000 pound ballerina. Just so graceful. Well, we're going to keep on moving here. You guys will get a chance to see Otis as we pass by. Okay. And this area is called Hippo Trail. If you want to walk on down and get a closer view of the hippo later on, I highly recommend it. Now, the rainforest is home to lots of primates. Okay, Do we have anyone, come on, down board, anyone on board with a good monkey call for me? Because I would love to hear it. <laughs> anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, great job. Because up next year we have some of our primates, the Allen Small Monkeys and the Red Tail Gwennon. Oh, they also live here with the spot next otter. Oh my god, they're, they're so cute. And we have these three species of animal all together for something called social enrichment. 
that they learn their very best social skills with animals that are a little different from themselves. So we wanted to make sure that they had those opportunities to learn those social skills. And I think one out there in the wild, which is right here in the San Diego Zoo. You'll also see that we have quite a few little baby monkeys bouncing around over here. Well, that's actually because we recently rescued a lot of these mama and papa monkeys from the illegal wildlife trafficking trade. These little guys, they are bought and sent to ship and sold all over the world for a few different reasons, and none of them are very nice. So when we found out about this illegal trafficking ring that these monkeys were trapped in, we actually went out and scooped them up and brought them right back here to give them a second chance at life. Well, now we are going to start to exit our rainforest and take a turn for bird country. You guys are going to see this bridge straight ahead of us, and that is part of Eagle Trail. That's where you can go to see those big birds of prey, like the harpy eagle and the Andean condors. They are quite a sight to see. And on our left, we have the African marsh, home to the lesser flamingos. They're just a bit less pink than the ones up front, right? Well, that is not because they eat any less shrimp. They actually are just from a different part of the world. And the North American flamingos at the front and center of the zoo, they actually are the most pink of all six species, if you remember that. So they're just from a different part of the world, making them a bit less pink. We also have our white-breasted cormorants hanging out in the nest, the blue herons, and the giant white pelican. They certainly do live up to their name. And we're also passing by a yellow kangaroo bus stop number two there on our left. We have actually four kangaroo bus stops all around our park. If you guys haven't taken the kangaroo bus yet, I'll let you know what that is. It's a kind of like a city bus service for everybody here at the zoo. If you hang out at any one of the four stops around the park here, a bus will be there to pick you up within just a few minutes and get you wherever you need to go. The tour bus that you're on right now, the last one leaves tonight at about 5 p.m., but the kangaroo bus, they will be hopping around all, the, all night at the zoo up until the time we close tonight at 9 p.m. So when you're all starting to tire later on, I highly recommend doing yourself a favor and hopping on my kangaroo bus. We've got my friend Joe here on the left. He's a very wild animal. Watch out. He bites. <laughs> but now we've uh, exited the African marsh. We don't have the tall grasses all around us. We don't have the palm trees of the rainforest. But we're going to start to see some pine trees from the Arctic. I wonder where we're headed next. farmer did not want to see them go extinct 
He actually went out and rounded up all the Bontabons that he could find, put them in a barn together, you know, one thing led to another. And then he had all these baby Bontabons that he was able to raise and release all on his own, single-handedly saving that species. And I just think that is so cool. Now the Bontabons, they are neighbors with the Southern Garan up here, the supermodels of the antelope species, as you can see. And I am looking to the left to see if I can find any polar bears through the trees. They might just be indoors right now. They've got a couple of secret rooms that they can go in to cool off. They've got a bunch of fresh snow and ice in there. So you'll just have to take a stroll through the polar bear plunge later today and say hello to them. We also have the adorable Chacoan pikeries here on the right. Now we actually thought that these animals were totally extinct over 12,000 years ago. So they are incredibly ancient. And just overhead, we have Sky Fari West. This is the other end of the gondola ride that we saw in the very beginning of our tour. If you take it from the front of the zoo, it's going to drop you off right back here. And if you take it from back here, it's going to drop you off at the front of the zoo. We're passing by the giant anteater habitat. Oh, we have a little Patagonian Mara down there, too. Two of them. Awesome. They kind of look like very big hamsters. Adorable. The giant anteaters, they are around here somewhere, probably slurping up some ants. And also on the left, we have our mountain lions. It is a rarity to see them out and about at this time of day. They are what's called a crepuscular species. They're most active at dawn and dusk. So you typically won't see them uh, in the afternoon, but if they hang out with us a little bit later this evening, right before the sun sets, that's when they come out to eat and to play. Definitely say hi to them later on. On the right is Mowgli's 4D Jungle Adventure movie. It's like a 15 minute 4D snippet of the typically hour and a half long movie. And there's a bonus, there's a bonus in there for everybody actually. It's nice and air conditioned. Oh my gosh, now this is extremely rare. This is another crepuscular species. This is the maned wolf. And they're typically not out at all during this time of day. Wow. Now they kind of look like foxes on stilts. They have the ears of a coyote, but they're called wolves. So what are they? They're actually not any of those animals. They're not related to hyenas or coyotes, nothing like that. They are what's called canids, and they're a very distinct genus and species. Nothing else is related to them. They're also a very ancient species. We have a bonded pair that live here together. Their names are Bravo and Isadora. And they actually don't do any sort of verbal communicating with each other. They leave scent marks. They have a very distinct scent gland. So if you get a whiff of a skunky, musky smell, that's actually the main wolves. And that's how they communicate with each other. Well, that was such a rare sight. I'm really happy we got to see them out and about. Oh yeah, get a whiff of that. That's nice. <laughs> Well, now we're entering the Great Elephant Odyssey, one of my favorite parts of the San Diego Zoo. Coming up on the left, we have these adorable little creatures that look like gerbils or guinea pigs or groundhogs, but they're actually not related to any of those animals. These little guys are called rock hyraxes, and they are the only living relatives of the biggest animal at the San Diego Zoo. Can you guess who that might be? Up there, look at up the there. elephants, yes. Up These up little guys share DNA with elephants and manatees too, which just blows my mind. Crazy. Just goes to show that not everything is always as it seems, but uh, that sure seems like a lovely lioness up there. Oh yes. That is Miss Ellen in the very back, our female lioness. And then uh, over here on the pedestal, we have Ernest hanging out up there like the king that he is. Looks like he just finished up a meal. Oh, nap time. <laughs> Real. <laughs> big stretch, kitty cat. The lions are a super big part of our 105 year history here at the San Diego Zoo. I'm sure you all saw that big lion statue at the front of the park today. Well, that's actually modeled after a lion named Rex, who we had in our care over 105 years ago, which is actually what got it all started for us here as a zoo. The lion's roar can also be heard from here all the way to where you guys parked your car today. It's incredible. Ooh, and it looks like Miss Ellen is uh, finishing up some lunch. Now, do any of my Lion King fans know what a group of lions is called? 
Good job, I heard someone say it. You are correct. A group of lions or a family of lions is called a pride. And lions are actually the only wild cats out there that travel in groups or prides. The rest of the big cats are actually solitary species, meaning that they prefer their alone time and uh, it's going to be like that for a while. <laughs> Coming up next year, we have a solitary species of jaguar. Oh my gosh, this is Mindiri, and isn't she lovely? Mindiri is our female jaguar coming to us from the Amazonian rainforest, and she is a very endangered species. She suffers from a lot of habitat loss there in the Amazon. Do we have any coffee drinkers on board, by the way? I mean, I'm a big coffee drinker. I would not be here today without it. Oh, yes, I see you so out there. <laughs> Something that us coffee drinkers can actually do to help out Endearie's species is just to buy the fair trade shade grown coffee. And that means that that stuff was just produced in the already existing shade of the rainforest trees and no land had to be cleared out to produce those coffee beans. And that'll certainly help her to find out. And I swear it makes it taste even better when you know you're helping out an animal like Endearie. Well, we are now entering our two and a half acre elephant habitat. Let's see who we can find. We have five elephants that live here, both male and female elephants, oh African and Asian elephants in this herd. Oh, look, over there. Now let's see if we can just find them right around the corner. This area on the right is the Elephant Care Center. And this is where the elephants go to get daily checkups. Oh, I think we have someone coming into the care center right now. This is a couple doubles of a day spa, everybody. They get a weekly mani patties here. And put those to scrub their own whenever they like. Oh, yeah, we do have an elephant in the care center here. There he is. I'm going to go off mic while this elephant is in the care center just so we can uh, not get anybody nervous. <laughs> positive reinforcement in the elephant care centers so that the elephants never have to be sedated or anesthetized to have an exam done or a checkup or a foot soak. So that elephant is probably going in for his weekly mani petty. Mani petty. And they're always mm, rewarded mm, with tasty mm, pieces. Mm, yeah, maybe I could back. get in on that. my manicure, it gives me a glass of champagne if I get my nails done. It keeps me coming back. <laughs> yeah, you would do it? Yeah, okay. Now let's see if we can find this over here. Mm, mm, mm. Dirt. Ooh, looks like someone is getting their snacks refilled. So we might not see an elephant over on this side of the habitat, but we do have our care team specialists uh, reloading the snack machines. We actually have the elephants away for just a little while so no one gets spooked. But you'll see that our care team uh, specialists there, they're re uh, restocking the snacks up on the utilities and they also uh, have a really special job to fluff up the dirt. We don't want the elephants getting sore feet. As you can imagine, they spend a lot of time on those feet. And when the dirt is nice and fluffy, it keeps their feet very comfortable. So when the dirt is all packed down, we have someone come here out and uh, fluff it up. <laughs> and just on the other side of the elephant habitat, we're actually able to breed, raise, and release over 300 babies back into the Southern California deserts 
bringing them right back to the brink of extinction, which is so important because these guys have a very important job to do. Does anybody know what they eat? Dead stuff. Yeah, leftovers, the, the things that nobody wants anymore, the carcasses out there. Fancy term for that is carry-on. And uh, they're alive and well, too. And now their numbers stand at over 600, and they're doing that all on their own. So we're so happy to have them alive and well, and that's also in part thanks to you guys. Just by hanging out with us today, you're helping to fund those special breeding programs. So we thank you, and the California condors, and the tigers, and lots of other animals thank you, too. We're passing by Kangaroo bus stop number four there at the California Condors. And coming up on map location number 10. And that's going to bring us to our itty bitty meerkats. And we have 14 meerkats in this mob. And that is the term for a group of meerkats. But you'll typically just see a couple of them out and about at a time. Because the ones that are digging on the ground, looking for a tasty grub, they have a job to do. They're feeding their families. And then the ones that are standing up all tall and cute, they are actually on guard duty, ready to ring the alarm in the face of danger. So now that we know that a group of meerkats is called a mob, does anybody know what a baby meerkat could be called? Oh, they're so It's a little. monster. And they are the cutest little monsters I've uh, ever seen. Uh, uh, uh. Did you see it? And we're approaching the African rock Kofi. The J is silent. And this is where you're going to find the serval cats and the trumpeter hornbills. And uh, over here on the rocks, you might find a clip springer or a dwarf mongoose. Not right now, I guess, but they're over there somewhere. And the African rock kofi, that's actually a term for a special rock formation, like you're going to see around here in Africa rocks. That's where the predator animals will do their hunting, and the prey animals will actually do the hiding, trying to stay safe from the things that are hunting them. And this area on the right is the Ethiopian Highlands and Africa Rocks are these paths leading in and out of the canyon. This is where you're going to find the baboons and the lemurs and the vermin monkeys and leopard sharks, leopard cats, African penguins, all sorts of fun stuff to see and do down here in Africa Rocks. And if you haven't been to the San Diego Zoo in over a few years, this will actually be the newest part of the zoo for you. Do we have any first timers on board? Oh yeah, quite a few of you down here. Awesome. Well then, uh, welcome first timers and welcome back for those of you that are joining us again. I have been to the zoo quite a few times myself. Oh, we're gonna stop here and let this other bus by. I have actually been coming to the San Diego Zoo since I was a little mobster. <laughs> Lovely, our friend Mandy is gonna let us by. Everyone say hi, Mandy. All right, we are approaching Sydney's Plaza. Urban Jungle is going to be down on our right. That's also where you're going to find the kangaroo bus stop number one. Over there right next to the rhinoceros and the giraffes. But right now, we are going to take a turn down Center Street and say hello to some of our bear friends, as well as Batari, our female Malayan tiger. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. The very first bear friend that we're going to say hello to over here is Alba, like the Jessica. Oh, my friend. <laughs> and she is one of our Indian bears coming to us from the Andes Mountains and the forests over there. She is actually a totally arboreal species of bear, meaning that she lives her life in the trees. She built nests in the trees, as you can see, eats in the trees, sleeps in the trees, plays in the trees, raises her babies in the trees. And that's also part of why she is such an endangered species. About 80,000 football fields of her home is cut down every day. So something that we can do to help her out is just to buy the sustainably sourced wooden paper products. Because that stuff does not come from a bear's habitat, or those paper products were recycled. And that's so very important because I do not want to see Alba's species go extinct. She's also part of our species survival plan. You know, doing what she does best to help save her time. Her and her longtime boyfriend, his name is Turbo, they actually gave us a little baby Indian bear about a year and a half ago. His name is Agapito, and he is just adorable. Well, let's see who we can find up next. We'll see you later, Alba. 
This is where Victoria, our female Malayan tiger lives. She's actually Connor's litter mate, so like his twin sister. Now let's see where she is. She is excellent with the camouflage. Those stripes really, really help camouflage tigers in the wild. She was, uh, you know, one of the 12 baby tigers that Mama gave us uh, throughout our species survival plan. Which is really awesome because the Malayan tigers are uh, super endangered with only about 200 of them left in the wild. So we're very, very happy to have Atari and her brothers around. Uh, 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 we'll take her cat nap and uh, we'll see you later, Atari. I didn't see it. You did? Oh. We have our female spot neck otter somewhere around here, typically lounged around by the water. And next up, we have my favorite big bears here at the San Diego Zoo, the Grizzly Brothers, Scout and Montana. They are North American Grizzly Bears, and they actually came to us from the Yellowstone National Park. They came to us about 10 years ago when they were teeny tiny bear cubs. And they came to us actually because their mama bear was teaching them that the best way to get their next meal was to crack open a dumpster, see if there's any leftover pizza, or maybe, you know, sneak into the nearest campsite and grab those leftover marshmallows. And unfortunately, that is not a very good bear behavior. Mama bear fell super ill from all the garbage that she was eating, and she was unable to care for her baby cubs. And baby bears do not often survive on their own in the wild. So the Yellowstone National Park Rangers called us up to see if we could take them in, and we were so happy to do so. We learned so much about their species during their time with us, and uh, we get the opportunity to teach you guys about them too. We wanted to learn about things that we could do to help save these bears. Oh my gosh! Tasty. <laughs> It is my rule of thumb wherever I go to always leave that area cleaner than when I found it. Whether I'm at the beach, or hiking, or camping, or just taking a walk in my neighborhood. I always want to make sure that I leave that area cleaner than when I found it, because I do not want any of the wildlife out there to get their paws on that stuff. <laughs> And down she's playing. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later, bear boys. Enjoy your I think your she's lunch. trying to break it. Next up, for my Jungle Book fans, we actually have who Baloo is modeled after. This is going to be the sloth bear. And our male sloth bear lives here. But he was actually uh, just recently introduced to one of our lovely lady sloth bears who lives just next door. Oh, he's in the very back corner of his cave. I might just be taking a little nap right now. I see kind of a black ball of fur. Well, let's see if we can find his lady friend on the other side. I saw them just the other day getting along very well. So uh, hopefully they'll give us a little baby bear sometime soon, too. Shala is the female sloth bear's name. She also likes to be taking a little snooze, so we'll let her do her thing. And come say hi to Shala and her boyfriend later on. Now up next, we'll actually uh, be passing by a piece of San Diego Zoo history. Coming up on the left, we have the Fern Canyon Trail, built during the Great Depression. A lot of these tall trees all around us were just starting to sprout back then. Now everybody can appreciate that nice dip in temperature that we're feeling, and that is thanks to our many, many plant species here at the zoo. We're actually home to over 700,000 plants here, many of which are rare and endangered. And we're not just a rescue for the animals here, but we're a rescue and a rehabilitation center for the plants too, making us one of the biggest and most visited botanical gardens in the world. We're very proud of our plants here because we know that without a lot of these plant species, a lot of these animal species wouldn't exist, including us. But also like the exotic birds and the aviary on the left, that's Owen's aviary. And then on the right, we'll find the sun bear forest where you can say hello to our sun bear friends and the red pandas too. All these animals need the trees to survive. Straight ahead of us, we have Wame Cafe, a great little Chinese cafe, actually named after the giant panda bears that we had here once upon a time, if anyone remembers them, I do. We were actually chosen by China for our special breeding program. And once we were able to get their population numbers up, 
We did have to give them back to China, but I do miss them dearly. Well, up next we are going to enter Africa Rocks. And the very first animals that we'll be saying hello to over here are the famous little tuxedo birds, the African penguins. And they certainly do enjoy the sunny San Diego weather that we have here because it is very similar to their climate back home in Africa. Fun fact for everybody, I know a lot of people think of penguins as strictly cold weather birds, but that is not the case. Penguins can actually be found on any continent south of the equator where it's warmest. And these penguins specifically are an endangered species, so we do have them set up in a special breeding colony here, doing what they do best to help save their species. And something that we can do to help them out is just to simply save water. Like turn off that water faucet when you're brushing your teeth, and if you're able to collect rainwater, you know, if you get some rain one of these days, and using it to water your plants later on, that will certainly help save water for everybody. Now coming up next are the lovely little lemurs. They're typically bouncing around from tree to tree, swinging on branches all day over here. They're very bouncy species. And we actually have five different species of lemur here in this habitat, even though I'm not seeing any of them right now. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Well, I challenge you all to actually take a walk through Africa Rocks later on and try to find all five species of lemur. It's a fun little game I like to play. Up next are the vervet monkeys. Also not totally visible from this angle right now, but they are these adorable little gray balls of fur, and typically you see them uh, combing through each other's fur looking for a tasty treat. Well, that is not just a way to get an extra snack throughout the day, but actually a way that those monkeys bond together and form special relationships. The leopards and the baboons, they live over here too in Africa Rocks. But up next, we are going to be saying hello to the icons of the outback, the koalas. Oh, and we have our male koalas closest to us on this side here, each separated with their own eucalyptus tree because the boys, they do get a little territorial about that stuff. So to make sure that there's no fighting, we have them separated, each with their own high supply of the good stuff, eucalyptus. And just on the other side of this building, we have our female koalas all sep actually separated from the boys right now because a lot of these ladies are busy raising their little itty bitty joeys. Does anybody know what a joey is? A yeah, it's a baby koala and a baby kangaroo too because those species are related. Now everybody take a look at your pinky finger. Pinky's up. From the very tip of your pinky to the first knuckle, that is actually how big a baby koala or a baby joey is when it's born. They're so teeny. And then they spend about six months in mama's pouch, getting all healthy and cute and strong and ready for the real world. And the fact that mama raises her babies in a pouch is part of what makes those animals marsupials and not bears. Koalas, they don't have the right koalifications to be bears, come on. Now we're back here in Sydney's Plaza. The Australian outback here on the rink where you can see more of a koalas and wallabies. And down on the right, too, you remember Urban Jungle, Kangaroo Bus Stop number one, and here's Sydney's Grill, a great spot to get some lunch. And just across the street, we have the Boardwalk Beer Garden. Cheers, everybody, and our gift shop. Now, whether you're buying a plate of nachos or a burger with us today, or a t-shirt or a drink or two, or three or four, I don't judge, you're actually doing your part to help save wildlife and support us in our mission here at the zoo to create a world where all life thrives. We're a totally nonprofit organization. So that means that any of the dollars that you put into us today, they stay here and they go right back into helping save those endangered species, feeding some of your favorite animals, funding the special breeding programs, and of course, you know, helps to pay your tour guide. I like that part too. So just by hanging out with us today, you guys, you are being an ally for wildlife and you're making all of this possible. So I thank you so much for being here today. Our tour is unfortunately coming to an end. I will miss you all so dearly. So while I get us pulled up to the unloading dock, let's think about a couple of things that we can do to help save the species out there. Like buying the sustainable wood products for the bears or the shade grown coffee for the jaguars, that'll certainly help. And if anybody wanted to take that one step further and donate to the Wildlife Alliance Fund, that's also helpful too. 
But like I said, just by hanging out with us today, you guys are making such a big difference and we are so happy to have you here. So once again, I thank you all for being here. Now while I get us all safely pulled up to the unloading dock, just bear with me. Once we are parked, I'm going to come around to the bottom deck first and then I will make my way up top to set you all free. Ahí está, mira. 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 Ahí está, mira.